Yeah, it's funny about fights. Um, you know, when I when I first started, you, know, you go into this fight and it's such a build up and there's there's so many emotions into it because it's it's new, and it's scary. And you're like, what am I doing? And it, it's it's over and you're like, ah, oh, this weight lifted off my shoulder. And the last man, probably like seven years or anything, you know, I, you're you're always thinking about a date and I'm thinking about this fighter and all that. And you think you're like, man, how good is it going to feel when I go in there and I beat this person? It's going to, it's going to be, I'm going to be on cloud nine the whole time. And I've gotten to the point where it, you feel that, but you're like, man, like what's next? What's next? And, and uh, the high is high, but it's, it's, you know, not something that uh, it's different than what you think about it before the fight. And so I've always been that, especially the last couple of fights. So like, man, that was amazing what's next you know and, and you know i hate to think about that a lot of times because i want to enjoy that moment i try to i try to uh calm myself down and enjoy that moment but even going out here you know i i accepted uh, uh to jump up to heavyweight and, and fight in a tournament uh, made it to the finals and then literally it couldn't have gone any better you know, one punch knockout against one of the greatest of all times in Fedor. You know, we were standing across each other and national anthems were playing, you know, and it was one of those things where like, holy shit, this is happening right now. You know, then to go out there and uh, knock him out with one punch and, and have, you know, a belt around my waist and two over my shoulders, it, there's, there's not a moment that really can replicate that, you know, and so at that, that time, you know, and my wife was able to come in the cage, I'm looking out, my friends and family are cheering, they're there, they're supporting me. I mean, that was definitely, you know, it, it definitely was a top moment of my career. You know, but then I went back in the locker room, I was like, all right, but I was like, all right, what's next? You know, where do you go from there? And uh, um, I've been having that feeling, you know, after this, after, like I said, for these last how many years where it's like, all right, I enjoy it, but what's next? Today, Ryan is doing a 20 minute session in our hypobaric conditioning therapy pod. And what the hypobaric conditioning therapy pod is doing is it's working his body at the cellular level. And how it does that is by adaptation to altitude. So every two to five seconds, the pod is changing pressure, as you hear behind me now. And what that's doing is compressing his body and releasing it. And his body is trying to think, how, what's going on with me? How can I adapt to this? Which it cannot adapt. Um, and what it does is it causes your body to build more red blood cells, but it also helps your body to utilize oxygen better, um, boost performance, uh, help with lymphatic drainage. So there's a lot of recovery that is going on for Ryan as well. And he typically does this about twice a week. How was that? I was good there. Yeah, I can tell you still had a little... Yeah, I always have to do that. I got a little bit of this right here, but... Mm -hmm. well, it sounds like you're in a fishbowl right now. Yeah. <laughs> that one day was bad, though. Yeah, that was a little sick. So yeah, we'll take her back I, a little bit. I had to, uh, my phone had this like weird thing to it, so I had to go to the Apple store. I try to talk to them. They, my ears are just, they get, how would you, uh, it's like they're, they're clogged. They're like clogged. Yeah. And you feel full. And he was talking to me, and I was like, what? What? I was like, I'm sorry, what? And I was talking loud, and I was like, man. Okay, so we're going to put Ryan in our cryotherapy chamber, and uh, let's get his temperature before he goes in. 89. Quite a bit of inflammation there, buddy. Hot. Well, I just worked out in 100 degrees. <laughs> That's you adapting, right? Yeah. Okay, so I don't need to. I need to raise you this time. Is that good? Yep. All right. So we're gonna do three minutes at negative 160 degrees Celsius. It was right. It was July, right before I fought. Uh, Iller Latifi. So I came and did a, we did all the testing before, VO2 max, anaerobic threshold, um, and then we did it six weeks later. And uh, I remember 
I was going through my thing and the guy's looking at me, he's like looking up at me. I was like, I think that's good, right? And I'm going, I'm going. Um, I doubled my anaerob anaerobic threshold. Um, my VO2 max was crazy different. You know, all, obviously I was training in that six weeks also, but um, to actually see it, you know, and, and you know, got my blood tested also before and after and to see uh, my levels of, uh, I think hematocrit were raised from the pod and, and uh, um, obviously the results right there to, to go from, you know, nine minutes, you hit your anaerobic threshold to all of a sudden I'm at 18 minutes. It's, it's, that's a fight right there. You know, that's, that's controlling that lactic acid the whole time. And so um, ever since then, I've been, I mean, the whole time, every fight um, I have a loss and the whole time I've been here. So that's a good thing. When I get out of here, you gotta shoot from the waist up though. Like you heard how cold it was in here. Just a little bit. 48. That's really good. 89 to 48. So what, what was that supposed to be when you started? Oh, 89? Well, typically about 86, 87. Um, I try to do it twice. It depends too, because the pod, even though it doesn't look like I'm doing much, it, it definitely is taxing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a workout on the body. Yeah, I know because I'll go back home and I, I'm yawning like at night. I was like, geez, why am I so tired? And it's definitely the pod. And sometimes I do the pod on the off day. And so I just have to I have to regulate that. And towards the end of my camp, I'll do it like once a week to try to let my body kind of benefit from it instead of just beating it down the whole time. It seems like extreme competitors, when they done with the sport, that's when the depression really starts because they haven't created a life outside of the sport. Yeah, and uh, you know, you you see a lot of people, I, you know, fighters. I know a lot of uh, you know high level, you know, guys in the military that come out of uh, special operations and all that. You have this camaraderie, you have this high the whole time, and and you always have something you're working towards, either a fight, um, a mission. You know, and you're doing that with your with your friends. You're you're uh, you're training and getting better, and you're around that your whole life. And I've been around it since I was seven years old, as far as wrestling. And then I got into MMA. You know, I got a job outside of right out of college, and I was like, man, I don't want to, I, I don't ever want to, uh, you know, go to the gym if I don't want to. Like I was burnt out from wrestling, and that took a month, and I was like, man, I still have that fire. I need to compete. I need to I need to do this. And, and uh, so I think that's a problem with a lot of guys like that. You know, then you stop and you don't have that, you don't have that thing on the horizon where, you know, a lot, I truly believe that a lot of these guys, they need to transition before that happens into something else. And so it's, it's a smooth transfer where you're like, yes, I'm not out there fighting, but you know, I'm, I'm uh, in the competition of business. I'm, I'm, I have this set up, you know, I'm gonna enjoy my family and I'm, I'm gonna tell myself that, you know, th this is what it, this is life now. And that, and it's, it's hard. If you are a competitor your whole life and that's taken away from you, or you're, you're, you're done competing, you know, it's, it's, I've seen a lot of guys, you know, they can turn to their family and they can and be a great family man or a businessman, or they turn to, alcohol they turn to other things and so there's a kind of a fine line there but I, I love to see people set themselves up uh, before before they're done you know and say okay it's not because I need to fight anymore it's because you know I just don't feel like getting up and training anymore um, you know and that that's where I want to be for sure and, and and feel like I'm, I'm getting that and for me I still have the fire I mean, I still love to do this I'm still one of the hardest workers in the in the room and uh, you know, when that day's done where I'm like, all right, I don't wanna go train. I don't wanna put the work in that it takes for, you know, that allows me to be successful, then that's what I'm done. All right, next one. We're coming in. We're throwing a one, two, and we're backing out. When I see his foot, when I see his foot move, I'm meeting him with punches. I'm meeting him with a one, two. So start over. Back, he's been going back a little bit. One, two, throw it like that. Come back. When I see his feet move, I'm coming back in. Ready to do a shot. So, 
Once again, stalking him. I'm stalking him. One, two. All right, I missed whatever. I'm giving him, him, him room. Because in that MMA fight, a million times, it's kind of you go, I go. You go, I go. And, you know, in the, at you know, the amateur level and starting off with the pros and all that, that's all it is. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm waiting for that foot to move. We've drilled this before. Back and pass. Okay. Once again, chasing him. I'm back. Wait a second before yeah, you come at me. Do I go? I back up. I'm waiting. Yeah, you know, for younger fighters and everything, you, you have to trust your gut and you have to read people. Um, you know, I've been around great people in this sport and I'm around great people now and I'm 30 something fights in. And, you know, I'm finally, I finally have, you know, the people uh, around me that I need, you know, and, and in the past, you know, there's been people coming in and out and, and boxing coaches and this and that and, and um, people, the riffraff outside, you know, when you start to get a little, little bit of fame or they see you on TV or anything. It's so it's about being a good judge of character. Um, are those people really here to help you be the better you, to help you succeed? You know, and you can bring them up on the way, but what, are the, what is their intentions basically? And that's one thing that you definitely have to, you know, uh, figure out, you know, right away. Because I've, I've been to different camps, different coaches, and been around different people, and that's going to come your way if you're going to be successful. And so uh, I've, I mean, I've been trimming the fat for 10 plus years now, you know, and uh, I do have people around me that I can trust that wholeheartedly want the best for me. And uh, it's, it's definitely, when that comes together, it's, it's cool to see. This is like 55%. close to you that you gotta watch make sure you leave it everything you brought pirates on the yacht give me what you got i'm eating good still i like stirred pot why you acting dangerous when you know you're not had to come remind you act like you forgot homie passed the rock right here i got the shot dunking over top of all the mental blocks bust through doors doors how you gonna do that if i'm in your space how you gonna react? What the hell you doing here? What the hell go back? Keep on treating me like skin. I'm gonna get black. Everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. Just perpetual. Just perpetual. Everything's on fire.